Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I'd like to discuss what is in my opinion the most disingenuous talking point with regards to anti-right to repair people. It tends to go something like this. Lewis, when you say that you want schematics and diagrams and parts to be available to all, that is a smokescreen. Normal users are not soldering stuff on their motherboards. Normal users don't need schematics. Normal users are not changing their charge ports in their phones. This is just for you as a repair shop to make money. This is just to benefit you. I would think it's important to dig into this for a moment. Let's just assume that that's true. Let's assume that incredibly condescending statement that end users are too stupid to read a schematic. They are too stupid to use a soldering iron. They are too stupid to fix their own stuff. Let's just pretend that's all true for a moment, even though it's not as condescending as it is. And let's say this actually does benefit me. There's two things that are important to engage with in this argument. The first is this insane fallacy that if someone advocates for something that is good for them, that it's, it cannot be good for the rest of society or that it is a net drain on the rest of society. For instance, if you advocate for clean water legislation, imagine if somebody said, he's only advocating for cleaner water because it benefits him because he's getting dirty water from that well. Yes, he's advocating for it because it, it would make him able to drink the water that comes out of the faucet in his own home. If that would also just so happen to help the other 100,000 people in that town that get their water from the same source, that benefits them as well. What benefits one individual can also benefit simultaneously the overall society around them. Secondly, an independent repair shop cannot make a profit, cannot stay in business unless they are doing things better than the manufacturers. Anytime that I am making a profit, anytime that I am making money, it is because an end user went to the manufacturer and heard a price tag of a thousand bucks and came here and heard a price tag of 250 and it was going to take half the time and they get to keep their data and they thought, wow, that's a better deal. The way that I make profit in that scenario is by offering a package that is so much faster, that is so much more convenient, that is so much cheaper, that is so much better, that is higher in quality because they get to retain all their data than the manufacturer, that they are benefiting while I'm benefiting. It's not that the customer is screwed over so that I can make money. We both benefit in that mutually beneficial transaction. In a time where there are as many people against capitalism as there are, it's easy to forget that there are some transactions in capitalism where both sides are better off when they make a trade. And often, our customers and the customers of many repair shops that are well-rated around the country have not only their customer better off, but they are better off. They provided their customer with a service they wouldn't get elsewhere, and they retain their data, and they charge them less, and they got it back to them faster than if it was mailed off to a depot somewhere. And the repair shop now is money that they wouldn't have had otherwise. What benefits the repair shop also benefits the community. The idea that you cannot advocate for something, that you should not advocate for something, simply because it just so happens to benefit yourself at the same time that it benefits everybody in the community is ridiculous. Again, I find this similar to criticizing someone who is advocating for cleaner water in their town because the water is coming out brown from their faucet because this is just because you want to be able to drink clean water in your house. Well, yeah, you and the rest of your neighbors and the rest of overall society. Most people when advocating for something that would benefit them can simultaneously be advocating for something that benefits everybody. The third is who it's coming from. So you're saying that you are concerned about people that are trying to make money, right? You're concerned that people like me may be trying to make money when you were charging $100 or $200 or $300 for a repair service. Okay, show me how much you care about people making money. You're mad when people make money, right? Okay, show me what you've done with your own repair services. Show me what you've done with your own internal logistics to ensure that customers are paying less than they do here for the same work. Oh, what's that? It seems like all the repairs that you would try to restrict us from doing simultaneously cost three to five times as much at your company. It seems like you don't care about that at all. You only care about that when it's somebody else making money, don't you? And I think that's the important way to engage with this argument. I'm getting this more and more and more now. You cannot trust Lewis because he is advocating for something that would benefit him. Now, there are bills that have been presented where they say, what we want is only for certain repair shops to have access to schematics, parts, and tools. I have wholesale, in every state I have hired a lobbyist in, rejected these compromises because what applies to me should apply to you. So now the talking point can no longer be utilized that, the, that what I advocate for is only something that is going to benefit me, 
not you. So now you have to find a new way to spin it, which is interesting. And I find it interesting that this is happening right at the exact same time that we rejected this compromise in a state that right to repair is being pushed in right now that I have seen more and more people saying, well, even though the legislation he is advocating for is equally applied to consumers and repair shops, well, you know, consumers are not going to really even use it anyway. So this is just about him. So once the talking point of the legislation I'm advocating for only is for me, is eradicated and destroyed entirely, now the goalpost has been moved to, well, yes, this legislation does apply to everybody. It would allow customers and normal average everyday people to get access to manuals, schematics, diagrams, and parts, but those plebs are too stupid anyway. They don't actually fix stuff, so this is really just for you. And I hope that you see the goalpost as it moves in these arguments. And I hope you can understand the disingenuous premise being utilized here when these arguments are put forth because they're going to be used more and more in the future. Once right to repair is something that we're actually close to getting to legally, you will see it then shift to a culture war where manufacturers and PR firms and everybody else are going to start trying to muddy the waters by claiming things that just are not true to try and get people psyched up to believe that we are the enemy, that we should be disliked, that we should be hated, and here's why. They are trying to make a profit, that dirty, filthy, disgusting, piece of shit repairman with his unwashed cat in his lap. And I think it's important to understand these arguments for what they are. For the entire time that I've had this channel and the entire time that I've advocated for this cause, I have also advocated that the information that is made available to me be made available to you. Even in a world without right to repair as legislation, all the information that I have on how to do my job I share with you, whether it is on a forum, whether it is in a guide that I put in all of my posts on MacBook board repair, whether it is on repair.wiki, where I go out of my way to fund contributors so that you know how to do all the stuff that I do, or whether it is in how-to videos, I want you to know and be empowered to do all the same things that I'm able to do. I want the opportunity to be there. I want the option to be there. Even if you may never choose to do it, I want the option to be there for you to have the education, for you to have the parts, the schematics, the diagrams, so that you feel like you own your equipment. Whether this legislation passes or whether it doesn't pass, I will continue to do everything in my power to ensure that repairs for the devices I work on are as accessible to me as they are to you. Above all, I think what's really important is engaging with you, people in my comments, the people in the repair community in general, on what the best way to push back against these arguments is. I used to believe that the best way to push back against them was to unequivocally reject any compromise that says that only dealers, only techs, only licensed business owners can get access to parts, diagrams, and manuals. But that is not enough if this little thing actually penetrates this idea that, well, you know, normal people are not soldering anyway, so this is really just for him. I could use advice on how to deal with these arguments going forward. I could use advice on how to properly craft a truthful narrative rather than let this garbage one uh, take root and win. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. See you in the next video.